Welcome back! For now, they still call me the makeshift announcer, but I could be rising up the ranks very quickly if this pace keeps up. I've been called in today by a very capable trainer who set up a challenge for himself called 1 vs. 24. Eight opponents will be giving it their best as this guy tries to take down as many of them as he can using just one Pokemon. Looks like it's an Alakazam filling up the rest of the team with dummy 15s. There's a 20. I've seen some strange things to include level 5s taking out 100s. But from the glance I saw at those 15s, their moves aren't equipped for them to do anything even close to that. And by the stipulation of this challenge, if any of them do come out, that's a disqualification. But anyway... It's time for battle one, it's one versus 24! Of course, Alakazam will come out first. And the first opponent will be... Steelix. I'm not sure either competitor would feel very confident in Alakazam versus Steelix. That can just go all over the place. First up, it will be Alakazam with Psychic, playing the offensive. Not sure what it will do this time. It's for 94, even though it's not very effective. Taking a hole, but looks like a rather small hole considering the 30-foot snake down there. Of course, there's not much you can do except substitute here. Alakazam knows that, that's what it does. 78 HP on the substitute. Dig. Does that break it? Yes. And another Psychic, that'll put Steelix under half. It's down to 130, so it's got about 40% left. There's really any difference between 40 or even 26 and 49. Still means two more hits. Now Kazam with another substitute against that Dig. Should probably break it again. This time it will use recover rather than trying to psychic and then recover while it's underground. Oh, technical difficulties here. It's using strength, not dig. Make that recover what you will. That time it hit for 79, so even strength should break a substitute. Your psychic number three, that'll put Steelix down to the red. Down to 34. And here comes the third dig. What'll it be? Substitute down to 156, or it'll use recover. Go to full health knowing dig doesn't have a side effect, so it just effectively almost takes a small amount of damage. Strength hit for 79, so dig would hit for about 90, it hits for 88. Now, now it can finish it off if it wants to, it will. Doesn't want to waste any more time putting up substitutes or other such nonsense. Just wants to get this over with. It's 1 versus 23 now. Steelix drops. Up second, Donphan. Almost similar to Steelix in the way they approach battles. Now well, Kazam Psychic. They're hoping it'll outrace Donphan. That'll be into the yellow. Over 200. Earthquake, will this hit 225 if it does? Psychic, big mistake there. Hangs on at 35! So it looks like it will get the outrace. It would both go down in two hits. But faster Pokemon wins in this case. Speed always important here. 1 versus 22 now as Donphan falls. Alakazam is going to have to take out the next Pokemon on a very small sliver of health. But with its speed... Barring some unusual circumstances, that shouldn't be a problem. That lost him out as number three. It's interesting, this first opponent, Terry, made a reputation for himself on using a tract. 
but sent out all three male members of the team, and as you know, there is no gay marriage in Pokémon, so that move is just completely blank in this battle. Petal Dance also hits for 79. So there's a tough decision. Substitute and hope the next one falls under 79, under 78. Doesn't break. Yes, that's what it's going for. 34 left. Here's Petal Dance. The number is 78. Does it get that much? So that's Alakazam's voice to turn. Oh, it doesn't break it! And the Bitterberry holds off the confusion for the first use. Now Alakazam free turn to use Recover back into the green. And the second selection of Petal Dance, third turn of choose. Multi-turn attack, you think? An attack as weak as Petal Dance wouldn't have a drawback like that, but that's what you've got to live with. No one ever said Bell Awesome was as good a Pokemon as Alakazam. Ooh, and almost half taken off with the first Psychic. This pedal. Two more hits for Alakazam. Two more hits for Bellossom now. Alakazam's faster. It can just run this one out. Using Recover. Hmm. I guess it's trying to guard against a critical pedal dance from Bellossom. That would make sense. It doesn't want to take any chances this early on in the challenge. Losing after just two Pokémon, that would be a major disappointment for it. But in any case, it survives this... Your Psychic number two. So now Alakazam in the clear. This one more Bell Awesome can't even take out Alakazam with a critical. Special defense down, that's irrelevant at this point. It's still one hit away from losing. Doesn't kill itself with confusion damage, it does get through this pedal dance now but it's not protected by the bitter berry. And Alexan back down to 114. This battle is over. So here's the final turn psychic for the kill. And that's three down. One battle Alakazam sweeps. Is this a sign of things to come? We've got seven more battles potentially. Go on to the second battle. He's up against this fighting specialist. Despite the fact that he has just as many water threats as fighting threats. And only half the team is physical typed at all. But here comes the second battle. It's 1 versus 21! Up first to be Alakazam, or I guess up fourth, it's Primate. That seems like a big mismatch. Primate not switching, I guess doesn't want to give Alakazam a free turn against anything. It's like, does this go down in one? Yes! Just like that, one versus twenty! Second choice, Blastoise. Well, at the very least, this will be somewhat resilient to Alakazam. As resilient as you can be is without picking types in, anyway. Psychic. Only 143, but that's still... Alakazam would get three hit kill on that. Iron Tail takes off 100. And it gets a defense drop! Leftovers, I don't think that'll matter. 68, no. Still two more hits. Psychic. Ooh, critical, so it saved it. Another hit. One hit 
there would have probably dropped out because in close to red with Iron Tail already having gotten the defense down. But it's still in the green to take on this third opponent, 1 versus 19, it will be Polyrath, renowned user of Mind Reader and Fissure. Alakazam playing it safe, knowing that Fissure can only take off 78 if you have the substitute up for 78. Here comes Mind Reader, which will do absolutely nothing to the substitute! And Psychic. Let's go down in one. No! 17! The Polyrath gets a Surf, it will get one more turn. Probably will not matter at least the substitute falls. So this will be the seventh turn of the battle. That's a rather quick battle at such a high level. Polyrath goes down. Uno dos. Adios, and this is over. Battle two clear. Alakazam still perfect. go on to the third battle. Time against the bird boy with a Pidgey on his shoulder. We probably won't be seeing Pidgey in battle. Far too weak to be put in at a crucial situation like this. Indeed, the six of choice don't even include the Pidgey anywhere, nor anything evolved from Pidgey. Alright, his seventh opponent, first in this battle, will be... Aerodactyl, it's 1 versus 18! Here we go! Aerodactyl has the potential to outspeed? What does Alakazam do? Alakazam going first with the Thunder Wave! Still putting on the Paralyze. Just in case, nope. Doesn't get the turn right away. Here comes Earthquake. 111. It's not as devastating as it could potentially be. 111 is just... Using Recover. Earthquake doesn't have any side effect. So as long as Aerodactyl keeps Earthquake, and Alakazam keeps recovering that... But there's the paralyzed loss of turn. Probably means Alakazam will strike, it does. Right on the edge of half damage. Another earthquake. Now, Psychic here could potentially get the kill. Don't think it's guaranteed at all. I hope it'll use recover rather than risk falling a bit short and then having to go down and take another earthquake. 197 critical would drop Alakazam right there. Hyper Beam! 170! So finally they have something that can deal more than half damage to Alakazam. But with the loss of turn, recovers it right back and you barely did anything with that. That damage of 14 with the lost turn. Psychic going for it, moment of truth, will it get 161? Yes! Aerodactyl down 1 versus 17. Oh, up second, it'll be the Zatu. Hoping to resist Alakazam Psychic? What's the plan there? What can Zatu even do of its own? Your substitute? Confuse Ray, that's gonna do nothing at all. Yeah, 
and Thunder Wave just basically playing around with Thatcher at this point. Loss of turn! So far, this one's been all Alakazam. It's for almost a hundred, even not very effective. I guess the Psychic that's supposedly... supposed to do something with the special stats. Evidently not. Nah. Drill Peck? There's something that... Does it break the substitute? Yes! But another substitute. Here you see Alakazim getting into its deadly groove. Is that you wasting another turn on Confuse Ray? It didn't work the first time. It... And then Alakazim preempts you a second time. Why do you keep doing it? Because... Probably because that you just isn't as smart as Alakazam. There's Recover. Here you see Alakazam getting into its groove. May even slow down to the point of taking one shot every four turns, but does so relentlessly and without being in any danger from anything. There's Substitute. A third Confuse Ray! Thatchu apparently still not learning. One more Psychic, that will likely put it into the red. 21! And another loss of turn. Now look at him, 221 Substitute, does it want to recover or... Nope! 221 Substitute is good enough for it against whoever that third opponent may be. Zatu drops, that makes it 1 versus 16! And Dragonite! Okay. Dragonite can do all sorts of things. Rather hard to predict what's gonna do at any given point. Ooh, it goes first extreme speed! That will almost certainly break that substitute. Thunder Wave. Extreme Speed doesn't care if you're paralyzed, it still goes first. And the Miracle Berry, it's even got that! Yeah, well, because they're probably not used to going second very often. Requires a whole new layer of prediction. And of course, Dragonite, if it wants to go first, it'll have to use Extreme Speed. Now Alakazam all the way down to 106. But it's recovering back up. And another extreme speed. I know it has the Miracle Berry, so it doesn't have anything like King's Rock that can cause Alakazam to flinch. And another recover. So right now, Extreme Speed is just hitting for less than half, letting Alakazam recover all the way up. Probably not what Dragonite wants to do, but... If you were a goofy little dragon like that, would you just want to fly around really fast and try to get people to see how fast you were? There's recover now, Alakazam finally back at full health. And another extreme speed, that's number five. Still over a hundred, still less than 156, which it would need to do to outrace recover, which it clearly doesn't. Thunder Wave again now. That's rather nice. Alakazam knows Dragonite doesn't have any extreme speed left. So it picks this time to switch from Recover to Thunder Wave. And last turn it was recovering from full health, knowing that Extreme Speed would take it down some. 
Well, this Thunder Wave only hits for Thunderbolt from Dragonite only hits for 76. Which could mean substitute. Valuable buyer of time at that point. Yep, there's a substitute at C76. And Dragonite just flat out loses the turn there. So that's possibly two more turns that it'll have to use to break the substitute. Alexam uses one of them on recover. Here's Ice Beam. Same power as Thunderbolt. Will it break 78? No! The substitute's still intact. Alakazam, full health. Here comes Psychic. Once you give it the opening... In all likelihood, you pay 140 damage. Two more hits. The Thunderbolt will break the substitute, which only has a few HP left at this point. Alakazam can run out with Psychic now. It hits. Dragonite hits for something then won't have enough health left to survive another hit. There's the first one, Dragonite down to 60! Gold Force... 75! And there's the finish! Critical hit, not that it matters. It only needed 60 damage. So Alakazam now three battles on its own. Perhaps it could be here for the entirety of these eight battles in this 1 versus 24 challenge. It's going on. Now, here comes the fourth opponent. This will be halfway. There's four psychics on that team, so this could take a while to run them out. We can only find out by playing out the battle. Here we go. It's one versus 15. Rapidash. Hmm. Alakazam probably just wants to get this over with. He knows there are four psychics on that team. That one hits for more than half. And reflect, not that it's going to help you. Defensors, no, it didn't. A little known fact when you use reflect, your defense does not actually rise, it falls by half. And then to compensate, the opponent loses three quarters of their attack. Alakazam couldn't care less what its attack is, it just psychics you to death. Takes out Rapidash, and it's down to one versus fourteen after two turns of this battle. And Mr. Mine. Substitute. Hmm. Thunderbolt. This one doesn't appear to have very much health, but it looks to be rather resilient to any psychic Alice is going to throw out. And there's a Thunder Wave. Right now, Mr. Mun just wants to be in attack mode, it seems like. They just wear down with Thunderbolt. Looks like a chance for Alakazam to keep its groove up. First, like I said, you do substitute from full health, then psychic, then substitute, then recover. As long as the opponent can't break substitute in one hit, or they are so dumb that they keep wasting time attempting status moves and don't have a substitute up, only to have them miss after you do put one up. There's... And Mr. Mine loses a turn, but first Alakazam looks poised to recover. Yep. Another 
another thunderbolt. Another psychic. That time. You're just looking at five hits to take down Mr. Mine. First battle, Steelix took four, and more recently, Zatu took four. Mr. Mime with less health than either of them. Oh, oh, here comes a hypnosis. That's not going to do a thing. Substitute. Not to be underestimated, it trumps so many moves. Beat your hypnosis, beat your thunder wave. Beat status affecting moves like Screech. For some reason, against the Grass Sapper moves, Absorb, Giga Drain, Mega Drain, Leech Seed, those moves are entirely worthless against the Substitute. They don't even hit for damage. There was that Gold Berry, not that it's going to change anything. Mr. Mime is still two hits away. Now, one hit. Thunderbolt. Breaks the Substitute. Then does it want to put up another one? Or does it... Yep. Going for the Psychic. That'll be the fifth one. And Mr. Mine will drop. That's 11. Perfect for Alakazam. It's 1 versus 13. And Exeggutor. That's rather quite the opposite to Mr. Mime. Instead of high special D, low HP, it's rather high HP and low special D. And Sleep Powder ran into the substitute that's put up impromptu. Hmm. This is deciding between... It'll do a Thunder Wave rather than recover from half health. This figures it's like you tour not potent enough to threaten, even if it might have to substitute down to a quarter, but here comes Psychic, which doesn't even get 78. Even though Executor and Alakazam seem like they do similar damage to each other using Psychic. And there's the recover. Another Psychic, does it take two to break the substitute? Yes. Now there's a lost turn by Exeggutor. Not that it would have mattered if his past activity is any indication. It would probably just use Sleep Powder again. But here comes the first Psychic. Another loss of turn. This is the chance. Thunder Wave, what?! That can't do a thing, it's already paralyzed! And contrary to what you might believe, it doesn't make the opponent paralyzed more even though Executor loses another turn. Is that a wrong button? Thunder Wave again! What?! I don't think this is a mistake, but I don't know what it is! Synthesis! Hmm! Aha! Maybe Alakazam is onto something, it used Synthesis right there. Another Psychic would have just been superfluous. Executor just synthesis takes them both down. I guess it's conserving PP. That's quite the interesting plan it's got there. That Psychic did 99 Alakazam. Is it gonna waste another turn with Thunder Wave? Yes, it will. That makes this PP cons conservation plan quite likely at this point. Fully paralyzed. Loss of turn for Executor. And Alakazam apparently keeps wanting to sink turns into Thunder Wave. Can't switch out to those level 15s. In any case, that would ruin the substitute. 
There's another synthesis. Psychotor wears off only one psychic rather than two. Sound like Sam planning in advance. Say it's IQ is 5,000. Not really sure about the validity of that claim, but it certainly thinks this one through for a long time. Anticipating Executor's plans. And... Substitute down. Another one. And another loss of turn. And there's a third synthesis. And another psychic. Now we know Executor Psychic not hitting for 78. Now the Kazam Psychic hitting for well over 78. Long battle. Seems to be all Alakazam's control. Turn as Alakazam puts up a substitute. Not sure what Executor would have preferred to do there. Waste a sleep powder or synthesis and get Alakazam that much closer to being able to go in for the kill. There's synthesis! That's number five! Though it might be out of those by now. hit, almost half, and the special D drop. Now Alakazam two hits away. With that substitute still intact, the coast is clear for it now. Forty-nine, and another special D down, not that it matters anymore. Alakazam just keeps getting these Supposed lucky shots when they don't matter. One hit away from victory. Oh, showing the PP two left on Psychic! If not for the Synthesis plan, it would have run out of PP! And this ten minute long battle is coming to an end. It's been thought out for quite some time, apparently. Very interesting choice of strategy for Alakazam. And it comes out on top perfect through the first half. Not only knowing that Executor had Synthesis, but playing right into essentially getting it to waste it. That's quite the feat. Going on to the fifth. Against the fisherman who's actually somewhat supportive of his apparent favorite type with five team members of that type. And most of them also have second types. Here we go, it's one versus 12 to start the second half. Alakazam, our man of the hour, or about half hour. Went a bit over half hour, but by the time this is over, it may very well go an hour. Halfway through it, 34 minutes against Amastor. Now, that's something you don't see every day, or even every thousand years, for that matter. 
know if he's in the size to paralyze it. But it still gets off the rain dance. I'm a star with a rain dance. That has the potential to do something. Not sure what, but something. So I should be using it. But then again, you have things using sleep powder, hypnosis, into now, and then right? It's a substitute for a whiff. And psychic for more than half, so essentially that thunder wave is a lost turn. Ancient power. It's a critical. 140. Does it get a boost? No. Not sure if the boost would even help Amistar go first against Alex Sam. Probably wouldn't able to survive another hit. Here comes Psychic. This first kill in this battle comes down. It's down to 1 versus 11. Alakazam 173, no substitute up. And Feraligate. 173 to Feraligator. Hmm. Recover here wouldn't do all that it could, but not recovering you risk taking 173 and going down. This is a very unusual situation for Alakazam. It does elect to recover, just so it can see what Feraligator can hit for, I guess. Hydro Pump! Here it comes! More than half! 185 on the Hydro Pump. It will now outrace Recover. At least until this rain stops. Now look at Looks like it's just hanging on for this rain to stop. Then we can figure out what it wants to do. 110. And the rain does stop now. Five turns. Recover. Hydro Pump no longer going to hit for more than half. There's Crunch. That's 270 versus 160. I don't think that'll hit for half. 148. So it didn't quite hit for half, but Alakazam now below half. And specialty down, now it will start hitting for more than half. Here's an unusual situation. Alakazam, Crunch would now just outrace Recover. And if you don't recover now, if you try Psychic, I don't think that can take for Alligator out. Guess you have to Thunder Wave. Hope you can get the one in four to make it lose a turn right away. Alakazam senses that's the play. Here it comes. For Alligator doesn't lose a turn. This one is over. Fully paralyzed, it loses the turn, Alakazam's still in it. And recover. Here's Crunch. 304. Down to 135, so it did outrace the recover. Now instead of waiting for the rain to stop, Alakazam's probably just gonna keep this up until the alligator loses another turn. Gets another specialty down, then all bets are off. But there it is, it loses another turn. This could be the opening it needs. Psychic. Boom. And it gets its own special down. The last one hit for 155, now the next Psychic on pace to hit for about 232. From being on the verge of a 1 in 4 crapshoot to stay alive to. Now it has this wrapped up. Her alligator goes down, it's 1 versus 10. This goes to show you give Alakazam the smallest opening, or even let it forge one for itself, you pay for it. And here comes Weezing. Last opponent in this battle. Weezing probably able to survive one hit at low health. Like Polyrath did earlier on. There's Psychic. But it can't survive a critical. Weezing down. That quickly, Alakazam turns around and just wins the whole battle.
scientist trying to prove the name for himself. In this sixth battle. Playing a bunch of tricks that Alex is likely just enjoys running into with substitute. But let's see what they are. It's one versus nine, and first opponent in this battle will be Mystery of Us. Psychic. Critical. Does that get it out immediately? No, it survives at nine. Mean look. And that could lead to stuff like Parasong. Parasong, one of the few moves that can actually work through a substitute. But it won't matter, even with that gold berry, this creep is still well within going down. And there it is. It's down and it's now one versus eight. Now the Kazam could actually do this. And up second. Umbreon. That's it, it's over. Psychic, Recover, Substitute, Thunder Wave, none of those moves can do any damage to Umbreon. This is done. Looks like he's cashing in his chips and quitting at 1 versus 8. 16 opponents down. Still quit the- oh! What's going on? Hmm. What? Substitute. Confused Ray. So at least it's trumping Umbreon. But I don't think there's any way it can actually do anything! Umbreon weak, Alakazam strong but not here. Now what's the point of the psychic? No matter how hard you try, you're not going to hit Umbreon for anything! Body slam! Well, that at least does 78 on the critical. And another substitute. Because I'm going to try to run this one down to struggle. There's recover. This time the substitute intact. Another psychic. Well, the Kazam has Thunder Wave. I wonder why it's not using that. Psychic just doesn't do anything. I guess. Hmm. That makes sense. Alakazam figuring it has more PP than Umbreon. It wants to force Umbreon down to struggling first while it can still do stuff like recover. It figures the only way to get this one is on struggle, so. Might as well hold off on paralyzing Umbreon for as long as possible because when it's paralyzed, each turn lost is one turn that it doesn't use PP and that it doesn't use struggle. Now that definitely makes sense. Whether or not it's actually viable, that's another matter. You know what? I'm currently doing this on a tape delay. Yeah, we'll come back live. So when we come back, we'll be live. But first, a word from our sponsors. Psychoanalysis. Also, oh, I said a word. A word from our sponsors. One. Back to the show. I said back to the show. And we're back on. Here we see. Long time has passed. About 20 minutes plus. You can see Alexian obviously couldn't hold off on paralyzing Umbreon forever. But it is still paralyzed. Umbreon down to using Psychic, not that that's gonna do much. Now I'll say Burning Thunder Wave just because it has to. Because you can't switch here. There's another Psychic. Umbreon loses a turn, I'm sure Alex is not exactly thrilled about that, but... Not as though we're in danger of dying anytime soon. Now, if any 
anyone wants to try this at home, try announcing for their own battles, good thing they had that 20 minute break because talking for so long really gets at your voice. Umbreon actually down to using Struggle now. That hits for 11. First one hits for 10. So you figure between 33 and 36 turns of using Struggle is what it would take for Umbreon to kill itself. And Alakazam's PP hold out that long. That's a critical. That means it takes double recoil even. 23. There you see the PP. It has 28 left for Alakazam. Notice that it has no substitutes left. Alakazam made sure. What's that? Trainer tells me that struggle into a substitute would only cause one recoil no matter how much it does, so. Alakazam's sure to get rid of all those substitutes before Umbreon gets to struggling. Just so that it doesn't have to waste turns breaking substitutes and not hitting itself for recoil. This match still looks nowhere near completion. We can't exactly take another break, we're already live, we can't warp to the mysterious future. That's not an option, but... Now while it can aim into the yellow, looks like it'll use Recover again. Another PP! HP are evenly matched, 296, 296. Not for long, though, here comes another struggle. Another critical, but... Alex, to Alakazam, critical struggles from Umbreon are probably good news because that means Umbreon kills itself faster. Also, the turn not good for it because that's a turn where Alakazam has to use a PP up, get it closer to a double struggle more. Umbreon hitting for somewhere between 40 and 45 of each one. That means it's double struggle. Alakazam losing 33 on each of Umbreon's turns. And gaining back, I don't think it's strong enough, especially not with Umbreon's defense. So it needs Umbreon to be as low on health as possible before it runs out of PP itself and starts having to double struggle. While we're waiting for this war to run out... How about some interesting Pokémon? Battle and... Chips. Take Rain Dance. You say Rain Dance powers up water move, that's pretty good. As long as you can hit at least three turns. Rain Dance and Thunder are actually more deceptive than it appears. Unless you're consistently hitting all five Thunders off the Rain Dance, it's generally not that good because... In that case, Rain Dance is really just a missed Thunder, so... Until you get to all five, Thunderbolt about as good or, as good or better as Rain Dance and Thunder. Just in case anyone out there ever thought about Rain Dance Thunder as a pretty supposedly good plan, there you go. Another thing that comes to mind here. The trainer chose Alakazam to be the representative for this 1 versus 24. But even against Umbreon still holding its own, I'm not sure it'll actually come out on top because the aforementioned differences in what they can hit for would struggle. Unless. Umbreon starts doing a lot of damage to itself really fast. But anyway, 
Sending Alakazam. You might ask why not Mewtwo? That might be a viable choice, but Mewtwo might have a bit easier point getting to here. Right now it's one versus eight. But in the actual battle against Umbreon, Alakazam proved it can run Umbreon out of PP. Mewtwo can't really do much better with the same moveset. But then Umbreon's struggles don't hit Mewtwo for as much damage, which means it kills itself even slower. So here's a case where you might actually have Alakazam being able to truthfully claim it's better than Mewtwo at something. How strange. And Alakazam in the yellow again, time to recover. About two more struggles, Umbreon will have hit itself into the yellow. Now there's 13 PP left for Alakazam on all moves combined. Probably wants to conserve those recovers as long as possible. And I noticed a single PP on Psychic. I don't think at this point it's even possible for that Psychic to even come into play in case Umbreon kills itself. It can't do it that fast. Not without. 12 straight criticals or something. So now Umbreon just over half health. Alakazam still has not damaged it at all. All that damage is self-inflicted. You have to think about how much damage has Alakazam actually taken over the course of this battle. Earlier on you had that string now, I don't think you saw it at home because we had that 20 minute cut out to get rid of that boring part. So now we're live instead of tape delayed. We had all those 25 bytes from the substitutes. The substitutes accounted for 1248 on their own. Alakazam probably taking close to 4,000 damage over the course of this battle. Maybe even more than that. We are now down under 150. It's dealt over 200 self inflicted damage. The scientist Craig says he's the master of trickery. How much trickery does it take to get an opponent that you can't even hit? The self-destruct for over 200 damage to us. Not quite self-destruct, that's an actual move. But 200 self-inflicted damage plus. It's quite a feat. Struggle again! This one marks Umbreon falling below 40% health. We've now reached the 91st turn of this battle. 89th turn when it's just Alakazam versus Umbreon. Alak if Umbreon, Umbreon hits itself into double digits, Alakazam might actually have a realistic shot. Covering on 181 because it's now out of Thunder Waves, I guess. Last time we saw it was at one, and then it used one. Another critical struggle. Umbreon covering very close to 100 now, 106. Now Umbreon under 100. Alakazam got through five battles on its own. And here it is holding its own against an opponent it cannot possibly hit. More than likely, if this had been two versus 24, Alakazam gets someone else to help it out, they'd have no problems clearing this out. But it's not two versus 24, it's one versus 24, now it's one versus eight. 
there's the psychic. Not that it looked for anything, but now Alakazam is committed. Struggle. It's the only way it can deal damage. Now Umbreon into the red. Well, it's over tw a bit over 20% actually. Here's your cover. Beyond 62. And now there it is. Alakazam starting to struggle. It is turn 97 of this battle. And it only hits Umbreon for 27. With this struggle, that means the next struggle from Alakazam will likely be it. Yep, there it is, down to 24. And on the 98th turn of this battle, 96 between the two combatants, do you believe it? Alakazam has beaten Umbreon. With Psychic as its only damaging attack, until it runs out of everything and comes down to struggle. It is one versus seven. Cash out. Oh, the, and the trainer deciding to cash out immediately, not even bothering if I struggle against the Stantler. But let's just see how this battle would have played out. Hey, trainer, practice time. Do you believe what we have just seen? So Alakazam doesn't quite get the full 24, but it gets through 17 opponents on its own to include the final one, an almost 40 minute long battle, something it can't possibly hit except for this highly Unexpected method we've seen here today. We saw Stantler put up a reflect there. It means Alakazam's struggle is basically hitting for nothing into the leftovers. It had the Miracle Berry. Is that the first time we've seen the Miracle Berry? Would that be better off as some other item? Didn't come into use until Alakazam has already called it quits and now it's just practice? Another confused ray, this time with no Miracle Berry back up. Now Alakazam finally gets a taste of confusion when it doesn't really count. But 17 entrants of the 24. For that, our trainer will take home an undisclosed amount of money. Because we do not reveal a lots of money here on 1 versus 24. And there's frustration. So this is this is the 102nd turn. Alakazam finally would go down. And that would have ended. The trainer called it quits after 17. And that's all the time we have for today. I'll see you when I see you.